am Kanisha Grayson, founder and CEO of The Art of Applying. And today we have another one of our amazing clients here to share her story, advice, and encouragement with all of you. We'll be calling her Gina, and she'll be on audio only just to protect her privacy. I'm going to adjust my camera because I feel like only a little piece of me is showing. Um, but yes, hello. Hi, Gina. Hello, Kanisha. Hi. Um, thanks for being here today. I know you are dialing in from... Uh, way across the world. I know it's a really different time for you than it is for me. So just really appreciate your time. Um, the first thing I would love to start with is just to have you share with everyone your great news. Great. Yeah. Um, so I got offers from um, U Chicago Harris School of Public Policy and Columbia University SIPA and Georgetown University. Um, out of the three, I got um, scholarships from Harris and Georgetown. Wow. So I'm still waiting to hear back from um, the University of Texas at Austin. Okay. The LBJ School and Tufts University. Um, I'm, I got waitlisted by Harvard Kennedy School, which I definitely did not expect at all. Okay. So what do you, tell us what you, what did you expect to happen with Harvard Kennedy School? I, I just didn't think I have any chance at all. And okay. then um, getting waitlisted was a pleasant surprise to some extent. Well, it kind of messed up my plans, um, but so it gave me some hope. Maybe I'll, it's only March right now. I can still have a couple of months to wait it out and see where I'm gonna go. Okay, good. And you know, we're here, we're here for you and we're here with you. Um, that was a lot of great news. Um, do you feel comfortable telling us about the scholarships that you got from the schools? Uh, I think you said Harris and Georgetown? Yeah, so for Harris, I got 25K per year, and for Georgetown, it's 18K per year, which nice. are pleasant surprises because I didn't really expect um, this much either. Right, so you're just more focused on, like, will I get in somewhere, and you're getting into multiple places with money. Yeah, I'm very surprised and very happy about this, too. Awesome. I'm really, really happy for you. How did you celebrate? Um... Well, not, not exactly, not really celebrating yet, yeah. but I've just, um, because I, I live in Japan right now and I still have a couple of months left in this country, so now I can just focus on enjoying my time here, spending time with my friends. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Good, good. And are you, a I just saw that the Olympics just got canceled, I think yesterday. Are you able to be out and about and enjoying things with your friends? Right. Actually, things are quite normal, at least in the city I live in right now. Okay. Um, so, but no big gatherings. So, which is kind of nice. I just enjoy time, you know, spent time with people um, more one-on-one -on -one instead of in a big group. Um, mm -hmm. you know, that's also more quality time for me. Yeah. So, I'm glad nothing of my life is too affected yet. I mean, okay. I'm... I'm being cautious though. <laughs> yes, yes, we we are all <laughs> all being cautious. I don't know if you saw, but speaking of Harvard Kennedy School, the president of Harvard um, just right. announced, yeah, that he he and his wife tested positive for coronavirus. So it is really important that we all be be careful and, and keep ourselves safe as much as possible. Um, yes. Okay, so Gina, those were some amazing results. Um, now, what people definitely want to know, now that they know your amazing results, are your stats. And I only want you to share whatever you feel comfortable with and share only as specific as you feel comfortable. The kinds of things people would love to know would be like, where did you go to college? What did you study? What was your GPA? What was your test score? Uh, what was your work experience? So whatever about your profile you want to share, let, let those out there listening and watching know kind of what kind of applicant you were applying. Yes, sure. So um, I am, I think I'm relatively younger than um, other clients of the art of applying. And um, so I'm 23 this year, so two years out of college. And I graduated from this liberal arts college in the Midwest. And I majored in psychology and East Asian studies. Um, and my, should I talk about my undergrad GPA? I, yeah, if you feel comfortable, you can give the specific or a range. Sure. Uh, so I, so I, um, my undergrad GPA is 3.69, mm -hmm. and I have to say, um, I took some classes that were totally irrelevant to my studies, and I got bad grades in, so yeah, sometimes I, I would like to call it like, oh, actually, my GPA is higher than it seems, yeah. 
Um, and uh, so after graduation, I came to Japan on a fellowship and I work with this international organization, which definitely gave me some amazing experience and mm -hmm. definitely helped for my essays and application. I want to highlight that. And so my GRE scores, I was not comfortable with my GRE scores at all. Okay. I took them twice and I got just, just devastated by the score I got just because how much effort I put in. So my um, verbals 155 and quantitative is 165 mm -hmm. and writing the argumentative session was five. Mm -hmm. so those were the highest scores I got among, um, out of the two times I took them um, just because it was not something I expected just because of the amount of effort I put in and time I put in wow. I was expecting more from my verbal section. Um, so yes, this is my basic stats. Those were great. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, Gina, tell us, uh, how did you find the art of applying? And when you found us, what resonated with you that made you reach out? Yeah, so um, I think I found art of applying a little bit relatively late in the process. Um, I found art of applying in the beginning of October because it was about I remember clearly because it was about two weeks before the deadline to Stanford's um, Night Hennessy Scholar Programs because I was just um, um, in the middle of writing the essay and I've already written a couple of drafts for the essay and I was just feeling very down and kind of stranded in that process because nobody was there to help me look through my essays. That's just something I needed ex extremely. Mm -hmm. um, somebody to guide me, say, oh, this is something you need to improve, or like, oh, you should write less about that, more about that. Mm -hmm. um, so in that process, I, I was just um, Googling a lot about Night Hennessy scholars. And then I found um, a YouTube video of um, David, um, yeah. a performer client of the Art of Applying, who Got the art of uh, who got the Knight Hennessy scholarship, so I, so I watched that video and I was like, "Well, this is something that would be helpful for me, and I think this might be a good investment." Um, because I wasn't thinking of anything about scholarships at that mm -hmm. point. Because I was like, oh, this is not going to happen, maybe. Um, but then now I think it's totally worth it. Just um, if I attend Harris and I was thinking about to negotiate with the schools to have a little bit more money, so 25K per year, that's a good return. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you talked about the return on the investment. Um, I would love to just talk about, you know, your experience in the breakthrough call for everybody who's listening or watching watching the way it works is you know we have a quick call with the prospective person and if it looks like it's a good fit then we have a breakthrough call and then if we feel 100 percent confident we can help the person at the end of the breakthrough call we'll invite them to work with us and we'll share the tuition and the idea is that we get started working immediately um what did what did you think the breakthrough call would be like gina and what was it like for you um, actually, honestly, I don't remember too much from because I was just really stressed out <laughs> by um, everything. And um, so the breakthrough call was the assessment call or? Uh, the no? breakthrough call is the call where we ask you a lot of really deep questions. Um, and then at the end, if we feel we can help you, we're like, okay, you know, we do that long recap of your situation and then um, make sure that we ha understand your situation right, and then we invite you to work with us. It's okay if you don't remember. <laughs> you made the commitment. That's what matters. Now, now, now I kind of um, recall. Just I remember because I was super stressed um, during that period of time, and I remember after, as soon as I saw that video, um, it was in the middle of the day, and then as soon as I got home in the evening, no, I actually booked, booked the call right after I saw the video book a call this on the same day in the evening of my time. Mm -hmm. Understood. Okay, very cool. And um, again, so, sorry, I, I was just kind of amazed by how how many available time slots there were. Just um, I could make a call right after I saw my videos. So that was really helpful. That's good feedback. Yeah, we try and we try and have slots like you know, same day or next day so that if people, you know, when they find us and they really, really need help, they're able to move forward fairly quickly. And 
I like it like that because um, the more time we have to work with someone, it, and you know, Gina, every week counts, you know? So the more time we have to work with someone, the better. Definitely. Okay, so um, I would love to hear about what were some of your favorite parts of being in the program? Where do you feel like we helped you the most? So there, there are many things that I found very helpful. First of all, definitely um, the, the editing part. Um, that was something that I needed the most. And <clears throat> working with my consultant on my essays, just um, it was a process not, not just about the writing, but also about a process to, for me to focus on what I want to do in my future. Like, like mm -hmm. I said, I'm, I'm relatively younger um, than many of other people who are applying to policy schools, like in my case. And I, I, I knew what I wanted. I wanted a career in international, you know, in the international field, but I didn't know what exactly I wanted. Mm -hmm. So, but I was just kind of writing about this vague passion for this field but work by working with my consultant by working on my essays um it helped me to do look more research about the schools and about the field as well about the organizations i might want to work for um so it, it was a process that helped me focus um to find so across this um, period of time it was about three to four months that i worked with my consultant on my on my various essays for different schools, I got to polish not only my essays, but also my goals. And so I could definitely feel the, the paper, the essays I turned in later on was much better than the essays I was working on in the beginning. Because mm -hmm. the time I spent to, with the help of my consultant, to like just think hard about myself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that. And second thing I found very useful is the was the mindset coaching okay that was one of my favorite parts because oh. i am just a big person on but maybe it's because i majored in psychology before i was thinking about at that time i was thinking about becoming this clinical psychologist so i was very much um so i i love counseling sessions and that was very helpful for me to calm down because I tend to you know just uh overwhelm myself with all the thoughts and emotions I have and I don't have many people to talk about that around me because you know I live in Japan and the, not a lot of people is in the same boat here trying mm -hmm. to apply for graduate schools but also a lot of people who are kind of in different stages of our lives of different age so that was some something that I that could calm me down in the process and refocus every time I'm overwhelmed with emotions. Oh, I'm so glad that you have, that we have that resource available to you and the other clients and the application accelerator and that you use it. So I'm really, really proud of you for doing that, Gina. Um, one thing I do have to make a clarification about is you called it a counseling session and it's not therapy. It's not psychotherapy. It's not counseling. <laughs> um, it's mindset coaching. Um, and you know that because you're a psychology major, but I just on video need to make that correction. Um, awesome. And so this is all so good. I'm just trying to think of what else I would love to ask you to just kind of draw out. You know, I, I would say, Gina, what encouragement would you give to other maybe younger applicants since you're on the younger side who are looking at, you know, going to these top policy schools? You didn't even think that you had a chance at the Kennedy School and now you're waitlisted and we're, um, you know, still watching to see what's going to happen there. Um, and then also we're looking at how can we support you and getting some more money out of your schools when you weren't even thinking you'd get money at all. So just, you know, what would you say to Gina a year ago or to, or to someone who is like, you know, really identifies with your story and wonders if this program could work for them? Yeah, sure. Um, I would definitely say I, I think I have a unique experience, you know, getting the chance to work in an international organization in Japan. Um, I also I, I speak um, Japanese and also native speaker of Chinese. And I think that's if I want if I got to say something to myself a year ago, I would say, don't think little of your experience. Um, because I didn't 
I was not enjoying my work 100%, I have to admit. Um, there are times I feel like, oh, I, I think I should be doing something else right now. I'm not sure why I'm here. Um, but because there are a lot of maybe more like mundane tasks ev from every day. But I have to say, those were the things that accumulated my experience. And I definitely have to say, I learned a lot from all of those, all of these tasks. Um, and apparently they, they are good experience to the admission officers. Yes, it is. Well. Yes, it is. So, so yeah, I, I have to just um, make use of all the experience more and just find meanings out of them and try to look ahead and aim big. Um, I kind of wish I started earlier, you know, for Harvard Kennedy School. Now and knowing, like, oh, I actually had a chance. Um, yes, the, I know what you're saying. Earlier for um, compared to all the other schools. Yes, I totally get it. You know, uh, Gina, one thing I want to flag for you, and I know the time zones are super tricky, but in our pop-up personal development school that we have going on for you guys, Extraordinary Academy, um, our writing center coach is actually going to be doing a session on how to write about your achievements in an interesting way. Mm. Um, and I think you would really enjoy going to her session since you have a little bit of a tendency to downplay your achievements or not sure how to talk about them in an interesting way. So definitely go to that because it's not going to be focused on grad school essays. It's going to be focused on how to write about your achievements in an interesting way in any, any way you need to write about your achievements. Okay, I think that would be very useful. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll, that's on that Extraordinary Academy calendar. Um, and then, of course, as a client, you'll have access to the recording if you aren't able to make it live. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, this is awesome. We're here for you. You know, as we already talked about on Saturday's uh, wait list call, you know, Harvard Kennedy School doesn't really want additional information. So there's not like a lot we can do, but we are here to wait with you um, to hear back about Harvard Kennedy School. And, and if it doesn't work out with HKS, um, you've got some amazing options. So we've got money at Harris and money at Georgetown. It's very exciting. And um, yeah, and then other acceptances. And then you're still waiting to hear from some places or no? Yes, waiting from um, Tufts and the LBJ school. Waiting, from t waiting on Tufts and LBJ. So these are all great, great options. And just thank you so much, Gina, for sharing your story today. I know that it's going to encourage and inspire a lot of people and that there is someone out there who, a, you know, three months from now, a year from now, is going to listen to this and be like, you know what, if, if Gina can do it, like I can do it too. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you very much. And we're back. This is Kanisha from The Art of Applying here with an update from our client who we're calling Gina. Gina, what is your update? Hello, hello. Um, so my update is that I got off the HKS waitlist um, about two weeks ago. That was very exciting. That's a very exciting. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel? Well, I guess excited. <laughs> Um, okay, so walk us through what happened oh, the, in, in, your, in your last video, well, it was audio, your last interview, you had been admitted to Harris um, and some other schools, and you were waitlisted at the Kennedy School, and now you've been admitted from the Kennedy School. So what does this mean for you? It was so... so um. Um, so basically that means I applied to seven schools in total and then I, I think it was kind of surprised I got into all the schools except Stanford. Um, I mean, if, if so, including Tufts, I heard after last oh, interview. Fantastic. And then, Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, did you get any money from Fletcher? Uh, no, because I applied late, okay. um, but I got money from UT Austin, the LBJ school. Tell us about, about it. So we've got lots of updates. Yes. I don't even remember um, 
when was the last that the time point like the last of the last yeah. interview because things start rolling and then um the only thing I remember was HKS <laughs> so it was just um wow so what was the bigger money that, scale. oh amazing what money did you get from UTLBJ um I got 47k for two years I think yes. so 47k spread over two years or per year yes spread over two years fantastic congratulations excellent very much. so then can you name all the schools that you got into just to remind us yeah sure so I got into um U Chicago Harris for mm -hmm. um 30k per year awesome. for two years and then Columbia SIPA I uh, didn't get any money for that. And then Georgetown, I got 18K per year for that. And Fantastic. UT Austin LBJ School, uh, 47K for two years. And Tufts University. Um, and yeah, so that's all. And plus at HKS, I got off the wait list um, pretty soon after I heard back from them for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is that was. Yeah. So interesting. So um, have you decided where you're going to go? Um, yeah, I, I think so. I, I think I decided, I mean, I was pretty determined to go to um, Harris before I heard back from HKS. Mm -hmm. But I guess Harvard, it just, you know, it's, it's just too much to reject. So I decided to go to mm -hmm. HKS. <laughs> okay, well, that's exciting. You sound a little shy about that decision. I don't think you need to apologize. <laughs> For any decision you make, we have clients who turn down full scholarships at one school to go to another school where the school gave them no money. So um, yeah. you have nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to apologize for. And, you know, it's great when you let Harris know you're not coming, that's going to free up that money for somebody else. Right. Yeah, so um, I got an extension for Harris until May the 1st um, okay. to, to decide. So um, I haven't turned down it yet, but I think I was very soon doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, all right, this is good. So I would, I know your parents were so excited when you got waitlisted at Harvard. So what happened? When, how did they react when you got in? Right. So, um, I, f first of all, um, for me personally, I wasn't really expecting too much from HKS in the, to begin with, because um, like we talked last time, I'm a relatively younger, uh, a relatively younger applicant, and I didn't really have much confidence in my own application, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so, plus HKS, the application deadline is relatively early. It's mm -hmm. probably the first I turned in, so I wasn't really confident with the materials, mm -hmm. and plus I wasn't confident with my GRE score. I got super frustrated. Um, after taking GRE twice, uh, but getting the prop, basically the same score every single time, mm. uh, just got super frustrated from that. And then, but I did what I could for HKS, the HKS application, um, the essays. So, so that's where I um, started with from from my expectations of HKS. And so, the day that HKS um, result came back for the first round, I was just, because I remember, you know, in the art of applying community, the online community, everybody is like, super excited about it. But I was just, um, I didn't feel much because I didn't expect anything. And then I, re I realized like a wait list, I was super surprised. And I told my parents about it. They were like, wow, this is exciting. Um, yeah. You don't know, you have a chance now. And then I was like, wow, yeah, I actually do have a chance. And, um, it wasn't, it was about three weeks after. Um, it's really interesting because that was the day, the last day I, before I moved back from Japan. Mm -hmm. So that was my last day in Japan. And I woke up and I saw my email. I was like, congratulations from Mishka. So I was like, wait, wait a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then so I, so I went to check. I was like, oh my God, is this even real? This is so fast. I, I can't believe I heard back from them that fast. Um, so I called my parents right away and they were just, just overjoyed. Um, they couldn't believe, oh my God, my daughter's going to Harvard um, because they mean so much to them. Of course. Um, that's something they never really imagined. Harvard just, um, I guess, means a lot to them. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Chinese parents. Yes. 
so yeah, um, th- that's been the exciting news for that week. Um, <laughs> basically, that, that's all we talked about for that week, even though I was kind of torn between. I was like, oh my gosh, scholarship from Harris. That was a good deal. Harris is good. I was already mentally prepared to go to Harris. Mm-hmm. Um, but then basically every, everybody around me was like, I don't, we, we don't think this is, you know, a choice you have to make. <laughs> I was like, okay, I see, I see. Um, yeah, so that, that basically was how it turned out. Just super exciting news for me because that's something I never really imagined. It was literally a dream coming true. And then more importantly is that um, things don't seem, you know, the goals don't seem that far away anymore. You know, that's no. just for long-term goals, career goals. Like, I feel like I can just do all of that. Oh, I'm um, so happy when I hear you say <laughs> That yes, is- I never knew how it felt like before because I don't know. This is really something I didn't expect, and my parents didn't expect either. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm just full of energy now. <laughs> oh, Super excited to start. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for you. I love it. So why don't we go back in time, Gina? And I want you to speak to yourself, the one that applied to HKS with our help, but didn't even believe she had a chance to get in, what would you say to encourage her and just help her to know like, yeah, you should apply, do your best. And let's like, what would you say to yourself, you know, a year ago working with the art of applying? Um, talk to talk to that Gina. Right. Um, I think it's probably something similar to what I said from you know, our last interview I said um, believe in your experience and stop panicking too much Um, (laughs) Mm -hmm. so I think I didn't really believe in myself at all I mean I I did what I could but I didn't I didn't think I had a chance I didn't really have any confidence even though I did my best in my essays to sound confident but behind all of that I was being so anxious um, I just kind of wish I had a little bit more faith in myself, in my own experience and in my own goals that I was actually not that far away from it. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. I love it. Well, I'm really happy for you. I would love that we did this little update. It's the first time we've ever done a little update like this. And I'm so glad that we did just to capture, you know, the first part of your story, the great news, and then this update and, and your ultimate decision to, to go to Harvard Kennedy School. And I love it. What a story of triumph to go to be so, you know, what are you, 24? Uh, I'm turning 23 this year. You're turning 20, you're 22? Yes. To be so young, to be so young, to be, you're the same age I was, to be so young. You're the same age I was when I got into the, to the Kennedy School. I'm um, so glad to join this club. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the Harvard Kennedy School family, the Harvard family. You're already a part of the Art of Applying family, of course. And um, yeah, just so happy for you. And you've got the rest of your life ahead of you. So get ready. Thank you so much. I am just... I hope I hope I can actually go to campus uh, and start a semester in the fall. But I'm um, just hoping for the best. <laughs> I hope so too. Thank you for sharing your update. Thank you. Thanks for watching our video. For more videos just like this, make sure you click subscribe. And if you want to work with us on your graduate school applications, visit us at theartofapplying.com or click on the link below in the description.